would like to present you the development of the agent-based model as part of the Casimir habitat model that we are developing since about 20 years. And uh, it's closely related to the case study in Altus Reed, the hydropower plant you can see here close to the Alps in the southern German region. And we'll be mainly talking about this fish ladder here on the right hand side and this attraction flow here. I also like to say thanks to uh, INBO, which has performed most of the field studies in the project or in this case study and also Tobias Epley, especially from uh, the operator Bayerische Elektrizitätswerk BEW, who has actually supported the tagging uh, of the fish a lot within this telemetry study. Uh, the goal is not actually only developing a model to have a model, but we also want to use the tool, of course, for the assessment of attraction flow. And that's uh, our final goal in the whole project, to have a tool for uh, mitigation or developing mitigation measures. The main steps in the, uh, this study were the telemetry study by the partner INBO, then uh, processing, filtering, uh, the detections from the study were a big part of the time, overlaying fish tracks with hydraulics and morphology, finding correlations between these environmental parameters and the movements of fish, setting up a model approach for virtual fish, also called fish agents, running different model versions. We actually tried a lot of different uh, parameters and uh, uh, model versions and calibrated it. Comparison with the tracks to uh, optimize the model. And then a first attraction flow assessment was performed. This is uh, shortly showing you the telemetry study. All in all, there were 25 grayling and 22 barbel tagged. And the people from INBO uh, installed a system of acoustic receivers and tagged the fish. And uh, this was done in, uh, from in February 2018. Actually, after some first tests, they uh, switched the system to a higher frequency system working with 180 kilohertz. And this uh, turned out to be more effective in the quite, uh, let's say, challenging system because we have a, a shallow river here, we have a fast flowing river and usually these systems are used in deeper and calmer um, uh, rivers or canals, but uh, finally it worked out. And uh, I have to say that there was a lot of positions collected, over 15 million after filtering using different methods, still 8 million positions. So one of the uh, challenges was to identify migration behavior. And actually we are still working on that. For the model development, we just assumed that migration behavior is defined by the behavior uh, before entering the fishway. And we also use different time uh, spans for that. First, also fish were partly caught in the counting basin up here in the fish uh, ladder. So, uh, it's also a question if the behavior of fish was at the end not a bit biased. I want to show you how we try to find correlation. So this is our fish positions for one of the graylings that was tagged. And uh, you see apparently this is now in the background, the water depth and the gradients, the closer the these ESO lines are together or uh, near to each other, the higher the gradient. So it looks like grayling seems to uh, per, um, prefer higher gradients, but you can also see a line here in the middle where there's no uh, gradient. So, but if we look at the flow velocities, you can see so also these flow velocity gradients seem to uh, be preferred areas where uh, grayling like to spend a lot of time. A second thing, uh, I just show a very single parameters that we um, investigated, but the second thing is the swim direction. You can see we defined uh, three different uh, ranges like swimming against the flow in red, swimming more or less perpendicular to the flow and swimming with the flow in green. 
And uh, from this slide, we can see that apparently grayling preferred rather bank close areas to swim upstream, rather central areas to swim downstream. And actually these were the two main directions for uh, overcoming longer distances, whereas for lateral directions, it was usually it's this one more in the resting areas that say like continuous moving in lateral direction was not that uh, often uh, recorded than moving up and downstream. Uh, additionally, for the model, we wanted to uh, investigate how big is the probability that fish move in certain directions. So we um, analyzed the probability of the swimming direction also in this period, 30 minutes before entering the fishway, which we defined as migration period. period. And uh, we included that in this model, it's actually a, a grid-based model. So the fish has to decide in watch what uh, of the neighbor, in which of the neighbored grid cells it's gonna move. And this frequency, this is actually a histogram of the move of the movement directions. So you see there was a higher probability that fish move straight on in this cell or in the cell one or, or seven here, then sideways or backwards. So we also included this in terms of a weighted random factor in the model. Also, we uh, saw that in these 30 minutes before entering the fishway, fish preferred certain depth areas, certain areas of or ranges of flow velocity. So this was also considered together with the preference for gradients of water depth and flow velocity, which I showed before that there seems also to be a preference. And we included that in a habitat suitability model. And so this is kind of the suitability in the migration period. We call it migration corridor suitability, which saved as, as a kind of background for the movements. So the um, concept of the whole model is based on several rule elements for movements in this grid. First, this uh, suitability in the background plays a role. So there has to be a basic suitability uh, that fish actually moves in certain areas. Then he would rather move into the same or higher suitability areas than into lower ones. It would rather move keeping the swimming direction uh, by uh, this weighted random factor than moving in other directions. So. Uh, the direction and a random factor was included in that rule. Then the total moves without a change in main direction were also defined by try and error actually. We compared the tracks and uh, changed this um, factor. So after a certain uh, uh, um, period of moving in one direction, the fish would actually turn around would also turn around when it reaches dead ends in the model, like if it gets in areas where the migratory uh, suitability is very low. We also included a jump criterion so that fish that would get stuck in uh, dead water zones with circulating water would get out of it, but also that fish would have a chance to find the entrance to the fishway. So with this jump criterion, they could also jump over several grid elements or grid cells and the total number of moves was restricted to 3000 steps not to have endless simulations. So I show you a comparison of a simulation now uh, for one of the gradings. This is the simulation, this is the observation. And as you can see, yeah, I mean, the tracks are similar. There's some random movements, lateral movements here. Fish is oriented along these gradients. And as soon as the simulation fish, the virtual fish gets into this area, the simulation will be stopped because then we think it has found the entrance of the uh, fish way. So we had some similarities in this, especially for certain fish, we call them migratory fish because some of the fish were actually more moving uh, undirected, but some of them really moved uh, towards uh, the fish entrance right directly. 
And with these fish, we had good agreements between model and um, simulation, uh, between model and observation. But now to do an assessment, you would like to know how many of the fish would find the imprint. So uh, the approach we chose that we, that we just let a lot of fish start. And now mm -hmm. this is the, uh, we have one more minutes, okay. I hope it's running now. And um, that a lot of fish were started at the lower end of the uh, model. And then we let them search and some of them found the entrance, some didn't, some left the model to the downstream area. So this is somehow an uh, indicator how many fish would find the entrance of the fish ray. But to, uh, to know uh, if this is uh, like um, we will also wanted to see what the flow, what kind of flow uh, is important for this behavior and how different flow rates would affect this behavior. So we also ran simulations for uh, higher flow rates. And you see in this case, the central part of the river is not used at all because in this area, it's too fast, it's too deep. And these were actually areas that were not preferred in the migration phase, or that's at least what our data say. And actually, yes. but you can also see... Matthias, are you listening? Pardon me? One minute, Matthias. Okay. Mm -hmm. But you can also see fish on the other side, they don't have a chance to get to the other side at the moment. So there is parameters that are not yet included, and we're still working on that. And the outcome of this uh, first assessment approach was that uh, a lot of fish found the entrance with lower flow rates. Uh, some fish were still searching after these 3,000 steps, but also a lot of fish left the uh, model uh, area to the downstream part. And uh, these are like first steps to, uh, to set up this kind of assessment strategy using this kind of model. So outcomes uh, after this development work is that fish tracks differ between species in the rituals and uh, like barbel behave different to grayling and some single fish were much more migratory than others, like had a much more directed movements. Then this agent-based model has been set up on a basis of habitat suitability model, uh, hydraulic cues and a weighted random factor defining about the uh, movement directions um, and the real tracks and agent tracks are similar for the more migratory fish. And uh, at the moment we are still working intensively on the model so there is further analysis on the different behavior types, resting, foraging and migrating is the uh, behavior type we are interested in. Additional factors like time during the day, for example, topography and more detailed hydraulics, hydraulics are to be studied. And currently we are also working on the integration of further large scale factors, having a field study in Belgium and small scale factors uh, by analyzing two uh, lab experiments performed in Dresden and in Darmstadt here in Germany. With this, I'd like to say thank you to you for listening and, of course, to the European Union for financing this project. Thank you.